Did you guys mute? Attendee on the line. Okay, good. I, I heard nothing and got concerned. Welcome to the live webinar, Think Big, Enterprise Cloud Strategies for Everyone. Um, we're just going to give everyone just one more minute to hop on and we'll get started shortly. And welcome again to the live webinar covering the topic, Think Big, Enterprise Cloud Strategies for Everyone. My name is Jane Fish and I'm the Marketing Manager at Razor Technology. I am super excited to introduce to you your speakers for today's webinar, Jenye, CTO, and Jeff Thompson, Director of Archite Architecture and our Cloud Practice here at Razor Technology. Before we get started, let's take care of a few housekeeping items. This one is being recorded and the slides will be sent to you after the presentation. What that means is you don't have to take frantic notes during this webinar. If you have any questions at any point, please type them into the chat box and we will get to them at the end of the webinar. So without any further wait, I will pass the reins over to Jay Gagne, who will kick us off today. Excellent. Thank you, Jane. Just a brief overview of what we're going to talk about. We just did the introductions. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the state cloud. We're going to talk about thinking big. Um, we're going to talk about uh, some enhancements that the cloud has to offer, and we'll, and we'll end with uh, some, some questions and answers. So for the uh, we can ask a lot of questions. So first question is, is do you want to run your organization as A, a business center operation, or B, a customer business innovation 
operation. While there's no wrong answer to this question, um, Razor has the ability to help uh, organizations that want to stay and maintain their current businesses, as well as uh, you know move IT closer to the business uh, and, and really become impactful uh, part of uh, the organization. Uh, I, I grew up, uh, spent the better part of, of a decade uh, at a large uh, insurance organization where IT is viewed as uh, just like the claim organization, uh, where we were a cost center, uh, and and we were not viewed as uh, you know an intricate part of the business. Uh, we maintained, uh, and we did great things. Uh, we work with a lot of companies that are in that state, and we also work with a lot of companies uh, where the goal is to continue to move be closer to the business uh, to become a you know, an intricate part of, uh, you know, the revenue stream and to deliver, deliver technology in the most efficient and uh, business impactful way. So for those that, that not know uh, a lot about Razor, we're a 15-year-old uh, organization, uh, you know, that started out uh, focusing mostly on infrastructure, um, and we have grown uh, to an organization that now supplies end-to-end -end capability uh, solution design of everything from um, uh, data center uh, to the application layer to the endpoint, including security, including private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud capability. Um, and we've been recognized in a lot of places. Uh, you can see on the bottom, uh, not only uh, in the Tech industry, but in in uh, you know in the Philadelphia area as a as a top uh, 50 uh, technical company and a uh, a pretty good place to work and a, and a pretty good place to work with. So every got one of these slides just to give you an idea. Your strengths don't lie in any particular industry or vertical. We've got lots of customers uh, in in all different verticals. Um, and all in my naive, I thought IT was just IT. Uh, I have come to learn uh, sometimes the hard way uh, that Surrey is in IT, uh, in certain businesses, uh, you know, IT has uh, a different responsibility. So, so this is a uh, customer, small and large, uh, across all different kinds of verticals. Uh, use all the different kinds of technologies with all different kinds of strategies. Uh, we've got a lot of experience uh, in in handling uh, those IT patients coming up with the best solutions to, to meet the challenge. With the support of a lot of different technology partners, uh, we support 20 of the top 20 uh, vendors out there and dozens and dozens uh, of other uh, companies, uh, again, uh, and so no matter how you slice and dice, store, compute, networking, security, software, uh, uh, cloud, uh, we've, we've got uh, support from a lot of different vendors. Our approach is very agnostic. We look to solve problem with the best techie. Um, and sometimes that means you have to uh, look at other vendors or, or a combination of key vendors to achieve a goal. And sometimes you can do it with a single vendor. And, and the, uh, the beauty of Razor is we've got relationships that help us make sure that we solve a problem the right way, the best way, the first time. So we talked about thinking. And is to, to to curve out big. So obviously, when we start talking about the cloud, the cloud is a big thing. Uh, you know that can mean scale, uh, and I think that's one of the most important things. Uh, the cloud does offer a, a very uh, available uh, capability. Um, a lot of organizations have uh, times of the year or times of the month where resources are needed. Needed, uh, you know, for a very short amount of time, and in a traditional infrastructure, uh, you end up 
know, having to build for the peak uh, and you suffer in the valley. Uh, one of the things that, you know, the cloud uh, offers is the ability to kind of ebb and flow with the business. So when we say think big, a lot of times people think that means think like the enterprise, and we'll touch on this a little later, but think is a relative term uh, for any organization, whether you have two servers, 200 servers, or 200,000 servers, um, thinking big, can scale, and managing growth mo in most efficient manner is what we're about thinking big. So, the uh, it's, it, it's still a nebulous term uh, to, to get the pun that's been thrown around for a decade now, but there are a lot of things that are goals uh, to getting to the cloud or or fears um, necessarily uh, in a hierarchy order, uh, but security is obviously uh, you know one of the top concerns you know in a public space in a multi tenant environment uh, with shared resources is my data secure? Um, it certainly can be when done right, uh, but there are also ways to do it wrong. Um, you know, will moving to the cloud save my organization any money? Uh, there are cases that's true, and there's cases where it's not. The cloud offers a lot of capability, and we've seen organizations that have adopted the cloud and adopted a lot of those additional capabilities and realized, oh, you know, actually saving, uh, you know, any anything on the finance side by moving to the cloud, we have more capabilities. Uh, and and if you do it right, if you build the right strategy, then that's a good thing. Uh, if you turn on a whole bunch of bells and whistles that the business doesn't find valuable, then it might be a bad thing. Uh, all just like when uh, virtualization came out, uh, you know, a, a decade or so ago, as people started adopting, uh, you know, virtualization, as things got easier to deploy, things got deployed. Um, and if you don't have, uh, as a part of your strategy, that mirror uh, and, and the SLAs, et cetera, et cetera, around uh, the resources being consumed, you get yourself in a position where, as you leverage the cloud, again, going back to cost, you might not necessarily uh, be uh, giving the uh, organization any money because you now have five times as many things as you used to have. Um, the kind of fear, uncertainty, and doubt of losing control. Now, you know, we're all technologists. Uh, we all love blinking lights and, and, and data centers. Um, and that fear of, you know, we control the gear anymore uh, is, is a challenge. Uh, I think the, you know, the, some of the answers to that are adopting cloud in the right way, putting those things uh, that make most sense, and wrapping it with a process and a strategy, help you not lose control. It actually will help you gain control. It'll also help free up uh, resource and time, uh, which in the IT space, uh, you know, you know we're, we're not in a, a position and haven't been for a long time where we're adding uh, significant amounts of, of resources to the organization, uh, and we're trying to control and, and, and costs and being to have a few extra cycles to focus more on what the business objectives are, spend more time with the application areas, et cetera, can be a good thing uh, and not something necessary, necessarily to fear. And the last kind of, we'll call it the ball and chain syndrome, which is, you know, when you start, when you move to the cloud, depending on which vendor, uh, provider, et cetera, uh, you pick, uh, it's that fear that now I'm, now I'm locked in. Um, I'm stuck. I made this choice. And whether I like it or not, uh, this is what I have to use, which is, you know, certainly a, a concern. But again, with the right strategy from the beginning, uh, you know, this is something that, you know, quality and mobility now, now in cloud is real. And that's why cloud adoption has really picked up in the last couple of years, because if you right, the lock-in uh, should not be a concern. Over to Jeff now. To, to tackle uh, all the good things about the cloud. 
Thank you very much. Um, so uh, happy to play the, the good cop here to Jay's bad cop um, and kind of talk about the, uh, the top five reasons people should consider and should go to the cloud um, and what benefits they can kind of reap through that process. Um, so first and foremost, we have scale. Um, in, in most all circumstances, any cloud service provider is going to be operating at a scale above and beyond most of the organizations signing in um, to those services, and that affords um, a certain agility, a certain simplicity of, of the consumption model where now you're focused on uh, supporting business operations and uh, you know, bringing things to market versus being focused on the micro nuances of refresh cycles, capacity plans, key performance capacity indicators, et cetera. Um, so by consuming cloud services, you have the luxury of focusing on really what matters to the business um, without limitations of size, scale, or agility. Um, and bringing that ball forward. So that's very, very, very important and, and one of the top things that we've seen uh, for our customers adopting the cloud. Um, now, two from a disaster recovery perspective, um, cloud service providers are going to bring a certain resiliency that a lot of customers may not have, right? So that the running bag for a lot of organizations that we walk into, uh, when we ask for their, their DR strategy, you know, step one is update resume. Step is, well, who cares? Um, and the reality is an effectively designed and deployed cloud solution um, makes that disaster recovery experience much easier uh, and, and very close to turnkey, depending on how you decide to deploy. Uh, so disaster recovery is one of the inherent benefits. If you need to have protection for uh, local incidents or geographic failures, um, effective disaster recovery is one of the, the key value adds for, for a cloud solution. It is flexibility. So going back to the, the scale conversation, um, if the business decides to go do something else, to spin up a new prod, um, product, to uh, move a project forward, to acquire the company, um, even, you know, um, downsize, maybe divest portions of the business, now you have the flexibility to address those business challenges um, in a very easy to consume manner with, within IT. Um, if you need to scale up, if you need to scale down, you need to scale out, that flexibility is there uh, in, a, in a seamless turnkey fashion um, that allows you to do what's right at that given point in time without barriers, without needing to go out and quote or design or deploy. Um, it's there and, and ready and willing for, for you to consume it. Um, now, cost savings, you know, that, that's a loaded term here, but I think it, it uh, warrants a uh, good conversation. Cloud can be cheaper uh, when we're talking about the, um, the, the true dollars and cents. If you're comparing hard cost to hard cost, in, in doing the organization, cloud can be cheaper day one. If you have a cyclical work with things that spin up at certain times of the year and then spin down, um, workloads that are only during business hours or, for example, you know, batch processing, uh, data analytics, you name it, that only work after hours, you can reap a lot of those cost savings by just consuming things like compute and storage and what have you at the time it's required, but no other time. And there's a huge benefit to that, but that's something that is very much business by business. Um, but in addition to that, the, the true cost savings that we see with the majority of, of uh, effective cloud consumption models is in the soft costs, right? Um, so if you are uh, addressing uh, of performance or scale or security um, or agility with the cloud solution, some of those just come inherently with it and now you don't need to make additional investments on the side. You don't need to uplift that data center, buy those new assets, hire those additional people that only have um, very limited focus um, for what may be business critical. If you need to check the box in an RFP, um, that might come straight out of cloud and you don't need to do anything. So a lot of the benefits of, of cloud come in the soft cost recognition, the time spent maintaining, refreshing, growing, you name it. Um, 
and getting that time back. What else can, can the IT team and the business and the application owners do that they would have otherwise been spending on other business functions? And now, in addition to that being seamless and easy, those cost structures go up and down with the business requirements. So that, that's really where we see a lot of the cost savings. Um, and Brian, with, with being effective here, um, when we walk into organizations, they don't ultimately care about, business owners don't care about the storage array, they don't care about the server, they don't care about those elements associated to it, they care about being agile, they be, care about addressing the market conditions and being effective as an organization. Um, we're finding that cloud really enables um, organizations to tackle those challenges and be effective at a business level without getting all hung up on and drawn into the weeds of, of infrastructure maintenance and, and operations, et cetera. So be effective is a holistic benefit of, of an effective cloud consumption strategy uh, when done right. So uh, if I haven't said it five times already, uh, I'll say it one more time. Uh, having a strategy <laughs> that meets and exceeds the expectations of the business is the first step in a successful cloud adoption or deployment. Uh, you need to talk to the business and the application areas uh, of your company and a, you know, holistic uh, view of where the organization is now, where the organization wants to go in what time frame is is appropriate for your organization? I think uh, you know it used to be uh, folks want you know five plus year strategies. Uh, IT is moving so fast now that you're seeing eighteen month to uh, two years, maybe three, uh, is is an effective strategy because technology is going to continue to change. Uh, your strategy needs to be flexible, um, and you need to make sure that you know, you allow for that flexibility. Don't set your goals too high. Make them realistic. Uh, you have to be in an organization. You have to be you know, better than uh, the the shadow and 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 the rogue uh, operations that are happening in a lot of organizations. Especially the bigger it gets, uh, more likely uh, that uh, that shadow uh, and rogue IT, uh, you know, are are you know. Know, prevalent going or uh, you know felt they're necessary from the business uh, for them to you know continue to to, to their own demands. And IT uh, you know has to be brutally honest with itself about your your current capability, but on what your future abilities can be. And you have. To uh, you know, some experienced resources, uh, you know, whether you hire those resources or you, you know, bring in a third party, um, the, the cloud with abilities is not necessarily uh, an easy thing to adopt. Uh, with the right people, it becomes a lot easier. We talked about big, we talked about you know, a big with enterprise. Uh, you know, we always hear the term enterprise class. Uh, you know, I think the reality uh, for a lot of organizations that are what we would call enterprise, meaning big in size, don't really fit what we would all, all think of enterprise class because the challenges in, in a larger organization become greater. So I think the answer to the question is to be in class is to be the best that your organization can be. Um, think big. This is not going to be a, a oh, shoot, think right, darn. Um, this webinar is not about how to give you, uh, how to forklift all of your assets and move them into the cloud. What we're trying to instill and kind of share um, are some key tenets here of how organizations can and have developed effective cloud strategies and leveraged those capabilities for their benefits. Um, 
the reality is, depending on where you are as an organization, whether you're small, medium, um, or the large enterprise, functional or dysfunctional, the reality is cloud adoption, depending on where business is at, um, where your priorities are, what your security and compliance requirements are, and where your internal IT talent is, uh, they're different answers, right? So what we're going to outline through this are a few different ideas of, of ways to establish kind of a strategic foundation and a couple different ideas for cloud consumption that may be right for your business and kind of start provoking some thought around that um, to help uh, our, our audience move along. So step one of, of any effective cloud strategy that we see is to enforce radical simplicity and, and, and real emphasis here on radical. Um, the reality is uh, if you're running a variety of legacy applications, disjoint connectivity schemes, and we'll say legacy monolithic infrastructure, the, the more nuts and bolts and snowflakes you have within that infrastructure, the harder it will be to adopt a, a cloud or a hybrid cloud vision, no matter what your consumption model is or needs to be strategically with the business. Um, so this is one of an effective cloud strategy in how we're assisting our customers along that route is to decouple all that complexity. Start building um, a much Oops, sorry. Uh, a much easier way to even consume, manage, and uh, digest infrastructure on premises and set the stage for uh, effective cloud consumption. So if you have bare metal instances, consider virtualizing them. And this sounds pretty basic, but a lot of customers that we run into that still have all these different outliers, they may say we have a virtualization first strategy, um, and everything that we can will be virtualized, but there's a lot of things that fall out of that. Um, maybe they have uh, hardware appliances from particular vendors when software was an option. Um, maybe they have mission critical systems that they're not yet comfortable uh, bringing into a virtual platform, such so as tier one databases, tier zero functions for the business. The, the reality here is we are uh, assisting customers with deploying life-supporting systems that are moving into to VMware, not for efficiency uh, or KVM or um, AHV, you name it, not just for for um, for C, but for simplicity. It opens up the ecosystem of supported partners that then now we can move that data, we can make it portable, we can make it consumable, etc. Um, so is interesting. Uh, the reality is for, for most organizations, uh, everything doesn't always apply. You will have assets, whether those are legacy applications or current ones, that just don't fit the mold. If they're static resources that they don't have a lot of burst up, burst down, scale out requirements, dynamic workload, the private infrastructure economics are going to make it a compelling case to keep it on premises. Um, but what you can do as an organization is set effectively transparent boundaries around these different tiers of applications that make them portable in and of themselves. When you have large networks with a lot of common resources that kind of tag um, application one through 100 in a common set, it becomes much, much harder to um, define and execute a portable modular cloud consumption fashion where you can actually take those applications and those services that are cloud friendly and move them to where they best belong. Um, and step three, realistically, is eliminate. If, if you have legacy systems that are out there that just need to get off the floor, that ERP migration that's been 90% done over the past three years, you name it, um, it's really all about finish up those projects, consolidate your, your applications and your business processes into really what matters, um, and, and that ready. Um, set the foundation, set the stage to move forward. The, one of my favorite quotes, and this is often misattributed to um, Albert Einstein, which, very smart guy, um, but E.S. Shoemaker uh, was actually an economist, and, and this is a quote of his, realistically, and, and we see this in a lot of the organizations that we support. It's very easy to make things more complex, more crazy, uh, oftentimes 
people uh, take pride in coming up with uh, incredibly complicated solutions to what could have been um, a simple problem, and that's going to hurt your cloud adoption strategy. So realistically, going back to radical simplicity, the goal here is to enforce radical simplicity um, to the point where you know you take those active, active SQL clusters, for example, and you say, well, how much more downtime has that cost me in configuration management than it has actually saved? And when you start asking questions like that, um, you start kind of building towards a platform that gives you the mobility and the simplicity that lets you focus on what matters for the business most. So while we're assisting customers along that path, there's the six R's of cloud adoption, and I'm not going to uh, roll through these and, and read off the slide here, but the, the reality is um, it's rarely effective, um, not just from an operational sense, but from a cost-effective sense to take everything you have and forklift it as is into your next generation cloud strategy. If you apply a blend of these R's to your applications, your business processes, you name it, um, you're going to find that you're going to reap that, that total cost of ownership outcome that you're looking for um, in a much more efficient package, right? So going back to enforcing simplicity um, and solving for some of those problems, if you can re-architect, re-host, retire, you name it, um, that those business processes, those application stacks, et cetera, to be cloud free, not only do you solve for on-premises efficiency and simplicity, but now you're setting a better baseline for moving forward. So, and this might sound a little bit weird for people, but start engaging in a cloud conversation before you even think your applications, business, and services are ready for it. Um, because when that directive comes, whether it's you have assets that are up for refresh or something starts failing or a new executive falls in place, the worst thing that you can do is rush into your cloud strategy. So start working with a partner to define what that strategy needs to be and build that on-ramp um, for cloud consumption within your business before you've even fully identified what needs to be there. Because now you have the relationship, you have the technology, you have the process, and you have the decisions, the prerequisite decisions in place to support that adoption strategy. Um, as we continue to move on uh, into you know, the realms of 2022 here, uh, there's a lot more appetite for consuming IT as a service, and, and that's a broad term. Um, but if, if we're talking about offloading elements of, of business process, whether that's backup, DR, maintenance, you name it, uh, and letting the existing IT team focus on pushing the business forward, um, there's a lot of appetite that, in that in the market, and that's manifesting in a lot of different ways. So in order to not be a barrier to that process to encourage the business to make smart decisions and move forward in effective ways. It behooves an organization, even if they're not anticipating to move to a, uh, a full-on cloud strategy for months or years, to begin that conversation track now. Um, because once you have that baseline, which takes a little bit of time to develop and plan for, now it's a truly frictionless process to start consuming cloud for what makes sense for the business. And a little backwards here, we were just talking about on-ramps. I'm going to switch to an off-ramp methodology. So <clears throat> if all the, the uh, issues impacting businesses that are putting people towards a cloud adoption strategy um, is about that agility, is about the simplicity and, and getting out of the way of the business, letting those projects move forward, et cetera. Um, so it's hard to argue with, with private infrastructure economics. And the reality is if you've got a stable, dependable workload, that might make sense for your business. But the reality is here, um, there's a lot of things that you can do to benefit from the cloud. Um, but still incorporate a financial model that makes sense for you. So if you have that cloud relationship uh, defined and set up, if you have a consumption model, that, that seamless process in place, you can start using that to, to test, to learn, to progress the business, and 
bring those clubs back in if that makes sense for you at the right time. So now we don't have to wait on procurement cycles. We don't have to wait on bringing new infrastructure capabilities into your existing platform. If you have a cloud service provider that can uh, has those capabilities that you can leverage for those novel use cases while you're building up to support them, all means treat cloud as, as effectively an inception point uh, for these novel workloads, for these novel use cases with an off ramp back into your cloud. And if we go back into partitioning and segregating uh, your applications in a simplistic, effect, uh, effective way, that's not a hard process to, to define or execute. And because you've all been so kind as to, to listen to Jay and I ramble for, for so long, we're going to throw one more at you, which is uh, probably the easiest mechanism for consuming cloud that uh, uh, most organizations can adopt today. So what if you could put your data to work? Right? So a lot of the organizations that we, we work with um, have tough time around backup and disaster recovery. They need to get that data protected. They need to get it off-site in a secure location, <clears throat> but that's just a cost. Uh, what if that cost could also become a benefit? What if you can re-leverage that information, that data, for other purposes that are critical for the business? If you can do DR automation testing, um, that can streamline the whole process for you. If you have tests in dev that could benefit in a secure way of being a clone of production, those environments can seamlessly spin up, do what they need to do, whether that's regression testing and new code release, you name it, um, and then spin down, right? So you the economics of uh, time workloads in the cloud, leveraging the same investment that you've made for data production. And trade planning. A lot of our customers are leveraging their DR copy to do really interesting creative things. So we're talking about side-by-side -side ERP up. We're talking about uh, an int to begin to migration, leveraging their backup data, leveraging their, their DR data in the ways. Because the reality is most organizations don't have the, the time or money or, or effort to maintain 2x of their infrastructure to uh, accommodate these point in time needs for the business. Uh, if you already have your data uh, in disaster recovery, in backup, in the cloud, consider using that for an effective and novel purpose. Now, if I have more than insurance policy, I have a business benefit. Um, that makes the whole conversation much less um, friction laden and uh, allows you to reap the benefits of that versus simply a cost. Uh, the last thing to talk about is, you know, the difference between timing action. Um, I, I think from a time perspective, uh, there's no time like the present. Uh, you know, whether you've started the journey uh, or you've avoided it or you tried it and it failed, um, the reality is the club's not going anywhere. Uh, it's going to continue to be a focus for a lot of organizations. And, you know, if you don't uh, have it at least that says you're not the cloud, and here's the whole list of reasons why. Um, a lot of things, you know, to avoid the cloud. Uh, I think it's, you know, no cloud better than a cloud gone wrong uh, comes into play. And, and I think the reality is uh, you have to look at it, you have to flip that over on it, on its end and say, let's do right, let's figure out the best way. And that's by having a strategy, you know, it flexible, um, you know, knowing that Taji and, and the needs of the business are going to, to, you know, flex and change and your business may be growing now, it may play it be shrinking now, but there's a new, uh, you know, uh, biz segment or or acquisition uh, that's going to, you know, change that tide and, and turn it back up. Um, so, you know, having that strategy, uh, making it flexible, as well as making sure that you know, the the cloud that you're using can needs 
So we talked about think big and think right. Um, you know, you have to take into account, uh, you know, scale both up and down. Um, you know, when a cloud, uh, being a technologist, I'm, I'm therefore a geek and therefore love Star Wars. Uh, it's it do or do not. There is no try the cloud. Uh, no approach uh, that says we're just going to give this a shot and see what happens. Because if you do that, then you really didn't have a strategy and and you're, you're, you're going to either get lucky uh, or you're going to fail. Uh, take a bunch of, of adopting a cloud, like eating an elephant, uh, or if you're a vegetarian, a very large vegetable. Uh, you know, do it one bite at a time. Uh, we've all been, uh, you know, part of organizations. Uh, you, you might even part of now where C executives make that comment of, you know, in two or three years, we're going to be, you know, some percentage, 80, 90 percent cloud. Um, if that's based in fact and there's a strategy that supports it, that's awesome. Uh, there's a lot of ways to uh, associate your cloud adoption um, and what that means to the business. If you think of it from a, a business process, perspective uh, if your you know traditional uh, processes are production test and development and you test and development into the cloud then you need 66 percent uh, you know uh, high cloud at that point uh, if you look at it from a data perspective as Jeff just talked about in the in the bonus uh, you know disaster and recovery and, and backup are challenges a large amount of you know 50 production data and 100% of all of your data is is likely disaster recovery and backup. Uh, you could, you know, claim uh, those kinds of percentages by just simply uh, looking at, uh, you know, the data. If you look from an application perspective, it'd be even more of a challenge. A lot of organizations have dozens, hundreds, or thousands of applications. So if you were trying to get 80% of all of your applications to the cloud. That be a more daunting task, but, but if you develop your strategy and you set the metrics of which you're going to base your success and failure on at the start, then you're going to have a platform that's going to likely be much more successful because you have a goal and, you know, no strategy works out. Uh, you know, you, you may be uh, looking for a technology that's, you know, not quite mature enough. And, and didn't achieve all the goals, uh, or you might, might uh, technology that you had no idea, we've seen it many times, was going to be so successful that well, we just went, you know, we, we thought we were going to do 20% and we wound up at 50%. And, and most important thing is, is once that strategy, you know, track your progress and share it, create dashboards, metrics, whatever, whatever fits your organization, um, and be able to to report back to uh, the business that you know here's where we are because probably the most effective tool in fighting you know the the shadow and rogue IT challenges is showing the organization how much you know we're already doing um, and laying forward the plan that says we're going to continue to do more. Worry about, concern about, wondering if, if uh, there's a, 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 a way to figure out how uh, effective cloud capabilities are or what your potentials are. Um, you know, talk to us. Uh, you know, our our consultative capabilities, uh, you know, cost you nothing. A, a conversation with folks that have been through it with, with hundreds of different organizations uh, is probably well worth, uh, you know, the time invested both for Razor as, as well as your business. And I think, Jane, uh, any questions asked that uh, Jeff, I can answer? Yeah, feel free to type in your questions in the chat box. Uh, we'll give you guys a few minutes.
our first question that came in, and um, the question is, what is better, platform as a service or infrastructure as a service? Oh, that is one of my favorite questions. So um, long story short, it's religion um, or political conversation. The reality here is, and, and I'm going to do a roundabout way of answering that, but the reality here is data gravity. Um, platform services have even more gravity, and applications have even more. So we're talking about the progression between IaaS to PaaS to SaaS. Um, I'm going to put it in terms of what is the cost or effort associated to, to migrating, right? So uh, generally, there, there's no right answer. There's no one-size-fits-all here. But if you can imagine doing a migration from Salesforce.com to Microsoft Dynamics, we've done it. It's possible. It takes some real work. Um, moving between platform services, if we're talking about databases as a service or other um, uh, serverless uh, compute, it's all entirely possible, but the effort associated to it uh, can be much, much higher. So effectively, the, the answer to whether PaaS or IaaS is better uh, boils down to how well qualified those decisions are in the macro scheme. Um, rating a technology agnostic provider uh, kind of gives us a healthy bias of perspective to this kind of conversation. Uh, we generally recommend that customers review what their options are and not make any decisions that perpetually bind them to any individual platform. Um, and even back where, where I came from, I came from a SaaS provider, but we were very careful um, on, on our internal cloud, the private cloud, if you will, of selecting technologies or architectures that would bind us into one particular vendor, whether that was an EMC or an F5 or an IBM or you name it. Um, if we depended solely as a business on any one individual capability that only a single vendor could provide, that at our cost structure, reduced our negotiation capabilities, um, and hindered our ability to scale and grow and shift as the business changed. So uh, the reality is platform services are fantastic. If you're thinking about the IT offload um, and the business focus that IaaS can provide, platform services take that even a step further into the database, into the application and web tiers, et cetera. Um, leverage those for where they fit most for the business, but also qualify where the rest of the competitive realm is. So whenever you're making a decision to step forward, make sure that you have a perspective on where you can possibly pivot, turn, and shift to the side. Um, perspective Cloud Vision at what I'll say is true enterprise scale, so large, large scale cloud adoption, is about multi cloud, multi service, multi platform. Um, I don't think anybody can get everything that a business requires from one vendor, uh, but uh, regardless of that, it's about picking and choosing what makes sense for that workload, that business function, et cetera. So my general recommendation is leverage platform services. They are fantastic, but approach that along with everything else in the cloud space with a healthy amount of caution. Understand your options, um, why you're doing it, and get closer to the business requirements before making commitments. So, so since we're playing good cop, bad cop, and you <laughs> have become good cop, I'll, I'll, I'll go to, to the dark side and say a bad or a bad as doesn't matter. They're both bad. Um, and I think the key in mind is if, if you if you look at platform as a service and that's where you're going, you bought into uh, infrastructure as a service. So the key thing there is make sure that the PaaS provider uh, has a quality infrastructure uh, capability uh, before you go there, because if you adopted one, you adopted the other. And second is make sure that, you know, to Jeff's point earlier about, you know, off ramping, sure that that's not a, a, a lock-in situation where, the, you know, you have to offload some of this capability, but now you are stuck with uh, leveraging, you know, that, that platform 
because it's not portable to any other cloud platform. Thanks, and Jeff. Um, I have one other question that came in. Your suggested approach to educating and selling the cloud strategy to the board and senior executives. That's not a technical discussion. Right. I, I'll, I'll start with that one. So the reality is, um, I think it, you have to understand where it's coming from. So if it's if it's the senior executives and the board that are asking the question, uh, then then the answer has to be, as, as all answers should be, based in fact. Um, if it's coming from IT saying, hey, yeah, there's advantages to adopting the cloud, uh, um, then again, the answer has to be based in, in fact. I think it's probably a lot easier. So if, if the question came from you know, the board says, why are we using more cloud? Um, then, you know, that's a defensive position that's a little harder. Uh, and, and I think, think the answer then should be, if I go back to how many times have I said it, a strategy that says, here's what our plans are. Here are the things we are going to be doing in the cloud. Uh, and here is the end result. Um, if it's a, a, a the, where the, the senior management is, you know, you're not a, a, a high cloud adopter, but the IT organization is trying to forward think and advantage of, it's a very position because now you're saying, here are the things we could do if we adopted the cloud. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, it, it, it depends on where it comes from, but the, the simple answer is under your current capabilities are, understand business wants to go can answer that question with with some fact and some reality about maybe we're not not you know friendly adopted enough uh, and, and here we're going to do about it or maybe it's things we can't do in the cloud and here why but here's things we can do in the cloud yeah, and I'll layer on there just as well with um, a, a term I'm going to steal from an unnamed vendor. Um, so they like to use the word invisible infrastructure, and, and this is obviously a, a private infrastructure play there. But um, I like to, to liken that to invisible IT operations, not that we want to make ourselves transparent and go away here, but um, to address the question from a, a different perspective, it's even about selling a cloud strategy to the business. It's more about understanding the business requirements and letting IT um, determine the best place to fulfill them. Um, because ultimately, if we're engaging at the right level, and, and the business is really the best place, to be quite honest, if, if, if IT is pushing a cloud strategy from the bottom up, we don't tend to see it happen uh, very well. But if we're focused on what does the business need to accomplish, what are the drivers, et cetera, then it doesn't even have to be whether I do that on-premises or whether I do it in the cloud. It's just, hey, I have a strategy. I can facilitate this need, et cetera. Um, so the, I think the best answer is, is you know, me determine the right place for it. It may be one of these different buckets, whether that's IaaS, um, private infrastructure, platform services, et cetera, um, we'll make sure that we will we'll, we'll address this based upon the requirements provided by the business. Because uh, ultimately, they don't care. They don't care if it's running in the infrastructure. They don't care if it's running in the cloud uh, as long as the requirements are being met, whether that is agility, whether it's security, whether it's uptime and availability. Um, it's all about picking the right platform. Uh, that should be the, the kind of trust that uh, business leadership is providing um, the IT leadership team. Hey, guys, I had just one additional question that popped up. Um, my firm management keeps bringing up security concerns and going to the cloud. Can data be secured, protected in public versus private cloud? And generally, which is considered more secure, pri private or public? So I think the answer to this is neither are fundamentally more secure than the other. I've seen public cloud deployments uh, much more 
more uh, secure than private and vice versa. Um, so the reality is understanding the kind of the bodies of governance, compliance, and, and legal requirements that, that you're under and what your current solution set uh, is affording you versus what you can get externally. So just to give you some examples here, um, if you're consuming cloud uh, to deliver a, a set of compliance objectives, whether that's PHI or HIPAA or SOC 2, et cetera, um, your auditor is going to come to you and say, okay, show me evidence of all these controls. Um, if you're running entirely private infrastructure, well, those controls are, are your burden um, from facilities on up. If you're running in an IaaS model, well, now you're, you're taking um, the responsibility from about halfway and on, and if you're leveraging platform services or even going all the way to SaaS, that, that burden and that, those bodies of requirements start falling off of your shoulders. So, Cloud, if you think about it, is a three-walled box from a security perspective. The fourth wall is to you. In most cases, no matter how you consume it, um, outside of maybe SaaS, uh, but even then you still have to, to add controls and rigor around it, maybe even in terms of authentication and access control. So um, the big part of that is take a look at what you're looking to accomplish. Take a look at what the cloud service providers are doing for you. They can make it e either easier or harder to accomplish your security objectives. But I think when we're talking about providers, you know, from the uh, the high touch uh, custom service providers such as Razor all the way to the hyperscalers, they have solutions that are designed around those security, um, those bodies of of security. So. Um, obviously, you want to qualify that. You want to check the credentials of, of the, the service that you're working with um, and base it off of that. But high level, there is no fundamental barrier uh, to meeting pretty much any kind of security requirement outside of certain government operations uh, in the public cloud space. So I think the answer is it depends. Choose your provider carefully and engage them in the conversation. With that, I want to thank you for your time and your participation. Um, you, this webinar deck will be emailed to you. Um, thank you.